It is always a special moment and, and, uh, and a moment of deep personal satisfaction to open a conference in the organization of which one has invested a considerable amount of time and energy. This is especially true of this conference, which takes place in Jerusalem in the midst of a fight for democracy and academic freedom. Tragically, this freedom and de the de de democratic values are this time seriously threatened by a government of the Jewish state, while the survivors of the horrors of German fascism are still living among us. Our conference deals with the place of ancient Palestina in the map of, on the map of mobility and migration, a topic which is intimately connected with what we would today call academic freedom. Indeed, the first Greek philosopher, the mythological Pythagoras, was famous for going abroad to study foreign mysteries. Diogenes Laertius, one of his biographers, says that he traveled among the Chaldeans and Persian Magi to acquaint himself with all available wisdom. The Persian Magi were not part of the Greek curriculum of education, um, but they were recognized by Pythagoras as, philo as authentic philosophers from whom he was eager to learn. Geographical and cultural boundaries were thus crossed for the sake of knowledge and progress. Incidentally, Pythagoras also fled his country to avoid the tyranny of Polycrates. He courageously opposed the tyrant and set up new schools in southern Italy, which provided greater freedom of expression. The Roman lawyer and philosopher Cicero moreover credits uh, Pythagoras with teaching Plato the idea of the immortal soul. Here too we see the importance of free traveling for the promotion of knowledge and philosophy. Plato is said to have traveled to Sicily to become acquainted with the discoveries of Pythagoras. Plato also acquired the, the notes of the Pythagorean philosopher Philolaus because Pythagoras' reputation was then great in that country. This conference investigates the role of ancient Palestina in such networks of traveling and exchange. The conference also implements the value of mobility by convening scholars from different countries. <clears throat> Several of you arrived early and marched last night from my house to the House of the President to join the protest against government coercion. We are all very grateful to all of you for making the trip here, especially under the present circumstances. In the future, we will be, we will be even more grateful for your continuous support. This conference could not have taken place without the active and enthusiastic support of many people whom it is a profound pleasure to thank at this moment. My first thanks go to Ms. Sima Daniel, manager of the Humanities Division at the Israeli Academy of Sciences and Humanities, and Professor Margali Finkelberg, its vice president. Sima proposed the idea that the Israeli Academy should set up a national forum of interdisciplinary and intergenerational research. As she was looking for a suitable theme, Margalit suggested late antiquity as a topic and pointed Sima in my direction. Newly elected at the academy, I spontaneously agreed to set up this forum and decided to focus on Palestina as a vantage point. The forum has been, a thriving, has been thriving ever since and brings together scholars and graduate students from Haifa to Beersheba. In May, we plan a, a field trip with lectures on Caesarea, and the conference today is part of that forum. Both Margalit and Sima have accompanied me on this journey with detailed advice and encouragement. It has been a special pleasure to work with the administrative staff of the Academy, which is highly professional, extremely helpful, and always one step ahead of things. Thanks. Warm thanks also to Professor Benjamin Isaac, the head of the events committee of the academy, which generously approved the budget of this conference. I have never planned a conference so smoothly. The topic of the conference crystallized in conversation with Professor Misha Maya, among others, the head of the DFG project Migration and Mobility in Late Antiquity and the Early Middle Ages at Tübingen University. 
Thank you for the conversation, the support, and the willingness to give a keynote lecture at this conference. The second keynote lecture will be delivered by Professor Simon Goldhill, an expert in cultural exchanges in late antiquity and a strong supporter of the Israeli Academy and its independence. Special thanks to you as well. For me, this is the second conference on a topic related to travel. In 2015, I organized a conference at the Hebrew University entitled Journeys in the Roman East, Imagined and Real. The collected papers have been published by Moore Zeebeck in 2017. I very much hope that the lectures of this conference, with its more specific focus on Palestina and the additional section on early Islam, will be as productive as those of the previous conference and result in a similarly successful volume. Thank you very much. <laughs>